Good morning. Today we're looking at section one, elementary derivatives out of chapter four, symbolic differentiation out of business calculus with Excel. In the last chapter, we were looking at numeric derivatives. There are a lot of applications. The numeric approach has the advantage of being robust. I basically build one template and I can use it for any function. In this chapter, we're looking at symbolic rules. It's fast and efficient when it works, but we need to build up a whole collection of symbolic rules. The pattern we will follow with each rule is state the rule, do some example computations with the rule, provide some justification for the rule, and then we may look at applications. The rules we're going to look at in this section are the rule for monomials, the derivative of a times x to the n is n times a times x to the n minus 1, the first exponential rule, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. The derivative, third rule is the derivative of a to the x is the natural logarithm of a times a to the x. Rule two is actually a special case of rule three because the natural logarithm of e is just one. And finally, the derivative of the natural logarithm of x is one over x. The first rule we want to look at is the polynomial rule the derivative with respect to x of a to the a times x to the n is n times a times x to the n minus 1. The first examples to look at are the derivative with respect to x of a constant c like 12 is 0 because this is the derivative with respect to x of 12 times x to the 0, and so we'll have a 0 out front and we'll get 0. This says if I have a constant function, the graph of this is a straight line, and the derivative of a flat line is 0. The derivative with respect to x of 10x, well that's really 10x to the 1, so this is going to be 10 times 1 times x to the 0, which is again just 1, so that's 10. The derivative with respect to x of 5 x to the 12 is 12 times 5 times x to the 11th. And so this gives you how to do positive whole, into positive whole numbers as the exponent. To look at some other cases, if I'm interested in the derivative with respect to x of 3 over x to the fourth, the easiest way to do that is to first say this is the derivative with respect to x of 3 times x to the minus 4, which is minus 12 times x to the minus 5. If I instead write it as the derivative with respect to x of 3x to the 4, there's a tendency to try and make this 4 into a 3, but again, it should be minus 12 over x to the 5th. It looks like the derivative is going up from, the exponent is going up from 4 to 5, but this is really a negative exponent going down from minus 4 to minus 5. The other special case to look at under this rule is if I have the derivative with respect to x of the square root of x, that's equal to the derivative with respect to x of x to the 1 half, which is 1 half x to the 1 half minus 1 is minus 1 half, and so this is going to be 1 over 2 times the square root of x. And so this gives us our first rule that we're looking at, and we're just doing polynomials or pseudo-polynomials, things that look like ax to the n. If I want to justify it now, I'm going to start with a simple case. If I wanted the derivative with respect to x of 3x plus 4, by definition, that's the limit as h approaches 0 
of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h, which is the limit as h approaches 0 of 3 times x plus h plus 4 minus 3 x plus 4 all over h. I'm going to move up and give myself some more room to do this. This is the limit as h approaches 0 of 3x plus 3h plus 4 minus 3x minus 4 all over h. We notice that the 4's cancel out and similarly the 3x's cancel out and so this gives us what's left is the limit as h approaches 0 of 3h over h which is the limit as h approaches 0 of 3 and for small values of h 3 is equal to 3 and so this gives us how to do it for a linear polynomial. To look at a more general case I'm going to look at the derivative with respect to x of x to the fourth and we're going to use the binomial coefficient and say this is of course the limit as h approaches 0 of x plus h to the fourth minus x to the fourth over h, which is the limit as h approaches 0 of x to the fourth plus 4 times x cubed h plus 6x squared h squared plus 4xh cubed plus h to the fourth minus x to the fourth all over h. Now what I'd like to do is some grouping of this and I'm particularly going to group these terms. They all have at least h squared in them and we're then going to look at that and say, look at it and say, when I want to simplify it, I'm going to notice that I can cancel my x to the fourths, and this becomes equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of 4x cubed h over h plus terms with h squared divided by h. I can simplify now to get rid of the h on the bottom. The limit as h approaches 0 of 4x cubed plus these now become terms with h. And as I take the limit as x approaches 0, that becomes 4x cubed because if there's an h in the term, it's going to 0. So this is the basic justification for that first rule. My second rule is straightforward. The derivative with respect to x of e to the x is e to the x. The justification for this will take a different format. We're going to build from the definition and then look at it and say, I need to do something numeric to justify. Well, the derivative with respect to x of e to the x is the limit as h approaches 0 of e to the x plus h minus e to the x all over h, which is the limit as h approaches 0 of e to the x times e to the h minus 1 over h, which is the limit as h approaches 0, sorry, it's e to the x times the limit of e to the h 
minus 1 over h. Now I'm going to claim that this whole section here is equal to 1, but I need to do that by looking at Excel and looking at values with numbers to justify that. And I look at e to the h, e to the h minus 1 for various values of h, and then e to the h minus 1 divided by h, and I notice that as my numbers get smaller and smaller, this gets closer and closer to 1. I could do the same thing if I looked at the minus signs. So if I start with minus 1 and copy down, minus 0 0.001, minus 0 0.00001 minus 0 0.00001 and minus 0. Point. Lots of zeros with a 1 and notice I keep getting smaller and smaller, and this is getting closer and closer to 1. At the same time, I could look at the balance difference quotient. And the balance difference quotient, I've got h and minus h, e to the h, e to the minus h, the difference of those two and it'll be e to the h minus e to the minus h over 2h, and we see it gets closer and closer to 1. So numerically, that first answer is closer and closer to 1. The next rule we want to look at is very similar to the previous one. I'm going to look at the derivative of a to the x and claim that it's ln of a times a to the x. The derivative with respect to x of a to the x is the limit as h approaches 0 of a to the x plus h minus a to the x all over h, I can break a to the x plus h into a to the x plus a to the h. I can factor a to the x out. I can bring a to the x past the limit sign, and I'm going to claim that this chunk here is the natural logarithm of a. That gives me as my rule that I would do it by a numeric method to show that it's the natural logarithm of a. The last rule we want to look at is the derivative with respect to x of ln of x is equal to 1 over x. And so this has a different argument to it. The argument for this, notice, is that ln of x is f inverse of x, where f of x equals e to the x. What that means graphically is if I draw e to the x and I draw natural logarithm of x, they're inverse functions which says if I take the line y equals x, these are mirror images across that line. And so since this is y equals e to the x, if I have a point a comma b here, my slope is b because this represented some value t and that b represented e to the t. The slope of the derivative was e to the t. In this case, I'm going to have a point b comma a, and my slope is going to be 1 over b. So b equals e to the a. So if b equals e to the a, then a equals the natural logarithm of b. And so here we have b comma natural logarithm of b, and the slope will be 1 over b. So this is the argument that if my function is the natural logarithm of x, the derivative is 1 over x. Thank you.